You're watching ABC 7 News at 5, on your side. WJLA-TV yesterday filed a police brutality complaint with the Internal Affairs Division of the Prince George's County Police Department on behalf of one of our own, ABC 7 News I team reporter Andrea McCarran. Andrea was injured during a police stop in the county last month while she was investigating a story. And Gordon Peterson joins us now to describe what happened. Gordon? Kathleen Lee, on, on April 15th, ABC 7 investigative reporter McCarran and her photographer were checking out a tip about questionable use of police and government resources in Prince George's County. They were following a county government car driven by a police officer who appears to be a full-time driver for the county's chief administrative officer. McCarran was driving. Photographer Pete Haeckel was in the back seat. Suddenly, they heard the wail of police sirens and saw flashing police lights. Back at ABC 7, managing editor Dan Patrick heard a call on the Prince George's County Police Scanner. Prince George's County Police were stopping a vehicle they said had, uh, was suspicious in nature and because there was someone videotaping them. When we first heard sirens and saw flashing lights, we assumed it wasn't us. And then all of a sudden, we're surrounded. She's got a gun pulled on there. Okay, that's right, that's right. At gunpoint, McCarran did as she was told. With her hands up, she walked backwards to the sound of the officer's voice. Moments later, a police officer roughly pulled her arms behind her back. Did you tell him at any time he was hurting you? I didn't say a thing, because as far as I knew, there were still guns trained on me. But she was injured. My shoulder felt like it was on fire. McCarran's shoulder was wrenched from its socket. But she I may have to have surgery. Drop the cab, Ryan. Yes, sir. Ryan. Meanwhile, our photographer had problems of his own. At least three officers had their weapons trained on him. Just keep backing up towards the sound of my voice. Just keep going. I'm back. I'm a backing. I'm a backing. Eventually, the police determined that this five foot four inch, 115 pound mother of three was not a threat, and they released her without a charge. But before she left, reporter McCarran had a question. You got pulled over because citizen that you're following. Excuse me. No, no. We're not saving it. I'm not giving the interview. I think it's an obvious case of law enforcement intimidation. Attorney Lucy Delglish is executive director of the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press. What I don't quite understand is what would be even slightly illegal about driving around town with a video camera. Uh, there is nothing illegal about that whatsoever. WJLA-TV has filed an official police brutality complaint alleging that Prince George's County police officers used excessive force against reporter McCarran. The complaint further alleges that the police officers may have known that McCarran was a journalist on assignment. If so, what we have here is a serious case of news media intimidation. Well, I think as a legal matter, it's clear that her civil rights were violated. They cannot use their power to interfere with your constitutionally protected activities. Prince George's County Police have refused our repeated requests for interviews. County spokesman Jim Carey told us they, meaning the police, had no suspicion that it was a news crew. The police department was responding to a call for a suspicious person following a police officer there was a threat felt. As near as we can recreate it, this is what the officer saw in his rearview mirror when he called for assistance. In a post 9-11 world, can you understand the officer's apprehension looking back, seeing a vehicle he doesn't know driving behind him with something in the back seat? I'm a mother of three. Most of the time I drive a beat up minivan. It's hard for me to perceive the sight of me as a threat. Now one second, stand by boy. And that's the question. Did the officers have to use force? The incident occurred on April 15th. Why have we waited until now to report it? Well, according to ABC 7's Vice President of News, Bill Lord, we've been waiting for responses from the Prince George's County Police Department to request for transcripts of the incident reports, radio transmissions, and email communications regarding this event. We've also requested dashboard videotapes from the nine police cruisers on the scene, but we've been told that every single one of the federally required cameras was either inoperable or not running. Leon? Kathleen?